Why don't we start with the World Juniors? Didn't go great. Uh, eliminated in the quarterfinal on one of the wonkiest goals against with 11 seconds. You may ever see kind of deflecting off a stick in a shin pad or skate and then off the post and in. But it's not like this Team Canada had been lighting it up at any point in the tournament. They There was, yeah, I mean, we all get to take our cracks at Latvia and uh, and run up our stats. But they this team never really appeared to click. And it it kind of panned out the way a lot of the experts said that it might when they looked at this team. I know TSN, when they do their, you know, they're reasonably honest enough about it, saying, you know, they may not be the favorites this year, but here's why Canada's still going to be great. But places like Elite Prospects and, and Scott Wheeler and The Athletic were saying this team does not have enough finish. Um, we can get into... You know, this birth year in particular and how they were affected by the pandemic, uh, this and that. But how much of, of Team Canada? I know you were quite busy. Did you find yourself watching and, and what do you think of, of the team? I took in uh, bits of every game. Okay. Either watching on TV or I had it on while while getting things ready. So I listened to a lot of the radio. Oh, yeah. Uh, terrible. Oh, uh, see, I see. I think, was it? Matt Cullen? Is that who was doing play-by-play? That, that's who, yeah, that's who's doing play-by-play. Okay, see, I, I and I only I had to listen to the one game on uh, on radio, and he kept referring to Devonte. I assume that's Devonte Smith Pelly. Correct, and they weren't bad. Uh, Devonte Smith Pelly did not bring a pile, but he didn't take away a pile. He, I thought his yeah for, again it was only one game. Like I thought his insights were fine, but a little flat delivery, yep. right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas I didn't know is that the Matt Cullen. No. No, okay. No. The, uh, the I form. didn't mind his call, the play-by-play. Yeah, no, play. and, and you're right. Yeah. And, and so where I'm going with this is, uh, in past years, the intermission has been Jim Taddy and and um, yeah. Sean Simpson. Yeah. Right here in town. Yeah. But uh, Sean Simpson, no longer an employee of TSN. Right. So they replaced him with, mm. drum roll please, mm. Anthony frickin' Stewart. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. And not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. Sorry, Anthony. Yeah. Not a fan of your work on, on Hockey Night or apparently the color. He was um, a, a bit of a homer, a bit of a shill for for the Maple Leaf, which is fine. But I, I think, and, and I think this brings up the, a wider issue. We'll get back to the, to the team itself. But sure. it's like the, f- the fragile ego of the Canadian hockey fan, especially this time of year, it's like we expect gold or nothing less. Yeah. And you have to sell it like that. And, and the reality is sometimes you're just not going to be good enough. Right. It's, it's a wild and crazy world. And so. Like it's entirely possible that that bounce could have happened at the other end of Canada gets by Czechia. But are you convinced you're better than the Swedes or the Americans this year? Right. Like this, that, that this game group. against the Swedes could have went. 120 minutes and they wouldn't have scored. Right. So, you know, this team just, yeah, that game, you can say they're unlucky to lose that way. And they were, but was this team a particularly good Canadian team? Not really. No. And as you've said it to me, they all could be fine. They, all these players could move forward. Matt Savoy, you name it, Connor Geeky. Like they could all go on and have better than average NHL careers. Sure. For whatever reason, it it just didn't click here, and you could feel like it didn't click, right? Like watching, and you're well, like, that Germany game. You're like, you're carrying the play, but I remember Gord Miller, uh, Gord Miller saying repeatedly, like they just can't get inside. Look at all these shot blocks and stuff. Like against Germany, you have to get inside. Like you have to be yeah. able to break that down, and this team just couldn't. Right, and and it's it's one of those things. If if you were watching, if you were listening. You know, even even on the television, how many times did you hear Mike Johnson saying, "Man, they need to shoot more." Yeah, way too much deferring. Well, after that check game, one of the uh, Hockey Canada officials says he counted thirty opportunities that Canada had to shoot and chose to either make a yeah. pass or get it in instead. And that's it's a lot of opportunities lost, right? And and then how many times did they miss the net entirely? Yep. So the shots they did take. Yeah. Now I get a big goalie, right? You're shooting for specific spots, but. The reality is you shoot enough pucks and the checks had 19 shots, I yep. think. Yeah. And they just wristed that puck. And and if I was listening to it at work on the radio and the radio call was, here comes Czechia on a three on three. And you're like, yeah, all right, three on three, whatever. We're all right. And you're like, bam, yeah. goal. And you're yeah. like, oh, 11 <laughs> seconds. You're like, that's. Yep. 
It's terrible. But I was very interested in the tournament. I said that. I, I was interested to see it back in Europe and earlier games and the like. Yeah. Um, but I was not. When that goal went in, you're like, oh, 11 seconds. You got zero chance yep. to come back. Yeah. This game is over. Um, but it, 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 I wasn't shocked, I guess is where I'm going. Uh, heartbreaking is heartbreaking for those guys who lost that game. Yeah, hundred like, percent. But, but anybody watching it and, and and following the tournament, if you were heartbroken by that, you weren't you weren't watching all the signs. Well, I I don't know if that's fair. You can cheer your it's heart totally, out and hope the Canadian totally kids fair. are, you know, get it done. You can be yeah. upset that they didn't, but you can't be shocked. Maybe is the you can't you can't you know shout at Oliver Bonk on Instagram. Oh. I think you can. I think we're seeing that. Yeah, uh, what a piece of shit. That's the, uh, just some fat guy who's never played any the sports. Czech double in his life. agent amongst us. <laughs> yeah, who's who's just out there sitting on his couch and just berating a eighteen year old kid. The, I look at a few different things that happened here, and look, it, it was elite prospects that I was reading before the tournament that said that there were some really poor decisions made in terms of guys that Hockey Canada always loves to bring, the plays the game the right way guy, as opposed to just... The Rob Zamner. Yeah, as opposed to the, you know, uh, you know Harlem Globetrotter style, you know, just pick your best guys and go. And even once they had selected the roster, they made some really interesting choices. And the one guy, and obviously because I would have kept an eye on him, is Fraser Minton on the top line. And that just didn't fit. That's not who he is. And last year and through the last little bit in the WHL, he's been pretty good on the power play. But like even the Leafs understood when they were taking this guy, this is never going to be a 100-point center who is, you know. Obviously, they put him on a line with uh, Celebrini and I think it was Dume to start. Yep. And he was supposed to be the, the dig it out and get it to those guys guy. And I, I understand what you're thinking there. And he's your captain, so you're going to put him on the power play. You're going to give him these chances. But it's just, that's not him. He'd have been perfectly fine as your number three center or something like that. Like, they just had too many guys like that who had to be slotted just perfectly. Like, Easton Cowan, the other guy from the Leafs, they brought him to be a PK guy because he's been killing it at that in London. But you can't have, on a roster this size at this time of year, guys that you're really only hoping to use in very limited situations when you already don't have enough finish. And that was the thing that that EP was pointing out before the tournament, that this team was at times probably going to carry play, was going to cycle well, yep. was going to have the, but they weren't going to have enough finish. And at the end of the day, you pointed it out, man. A lot of shots wide, a lot of shots blocked. That's exactly what happened. There were lots of moments where Canada carried the play and just couldn't finish it. And that's, you know... And, and I was trying to think of, because it, it felt a lot like, really, and you go back and you start to look at some of the results from sort of 2010 till now, right? And there's some hit and miss oh, in, yeah. in that last, and and part of it is, like, this is a tournament without the Russians. Yep. And you still didn't make the semis. Yep. And so it, it's good. I think that it's good for the depth of hockey that the Slovaks sure. are, are on the come again. The Czechs are clearly... At least in an age group, yeah, where it's strong. Um, I want to win a gold every year too. I, I do. I don't. I don't. But the depth of hockey is better, I think, right at this moment than it's been in a long time. The Swiss should have beat the Swedes, I think, in that in that other quarter. Yeah, yeah. But when well, the Germans beat the Finns in the round robin, and yeah. the Finns get through, but that's good for hockey when those things happen. Of right? course it's, it is. Yeah. Well, and then the Finns in the crossover beat the higher seeded Slovaks. Yep. Yeah, beat the, the Finns beat after losing to the Germans, beat the Swedes who hadn't allowed a goal in the first three games. Yes. In the round robin. Yeah. yeah you can't, the, the, the Finns are pesky and no matter what happens, no matter what, they are always, yeah, they're a force, man. They, they, they routinely get it done. Yeah. But I was looking back at the 2016 roster cause I'm like. What was that team that had Braden Point on it and and Mitch, Mitch Marner. Marner? Yeah, so the Marner one is the one that always stands out to me as like that wasn't a very that team didn't click that never team never clicked. So I went back to look at that team and to see because they didn't they didn't I, I don't know where they finished but they didn't finish in the top four. Right. So that team had Braden Point on it. It had Mitch Marner on it. It had Travis Konechny on it. Uh, Thomas Shabbat was on it. Dylan Strom. Dylan Strom is on that. Yeah. And so you're like. Man, that's some, 
Should that, be fine. That on its own is is some good talent, but it just didn't click, and it didn't feel like in the tournament. My recollection was that it was going to click, and it didn't. Obviously, no, yeah. so sometimes whether it's your you know your Owen Backs or your like I said your Celebrines, who was awesome. Yep. I hope he gets another crack at this next year. It seems probably unlikely, doesn't it? Like as a number one pick, it's yeah. pretty rare that yeah, guy's yeah. available again. I know, but but is he going to be a Bedard, right? Or is he going to be a Heeshear? Yeah. Which Heeshear today? You want pick. that guy badly on your team? Yeah, for sure you do. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but he was a number one. Pick yeah, it took some time. Yeah, but so you know, if he's a Heeshear type, then then let him come back. There's been some talk that this 2004 age group was already not the strongest hockey Canada was going to have to have and maybe no more impacted by the pandemic than anybody else, right? Just at that point in their development coming along. Uh, then Hockey Canada obviously has some some budget issues after half their sponsors leave uh, while Hockey Canada is feeling some shame. Uh, so they didn't go to, uh, they didn't have their their summer training camp. They didn't go to that whatever they call it. It's normally in upstate New York, right? Every summer where the, the top teams come over. Uh, this group wasn't invested in the same way. So I don't want to make any excuses for them, but you, you you look at how many guys ended up in the NHL from this age group and weren't given back. You look at this already not being a strong age group and then the pandemic and the lack of opportunities to, you know, they didn't go to the Ivan Helenka, these sorts of things. This was just maybe never going to be your year. Right. And... That's a bummer. There are some opportunities you look at as the tournament got started. Um, a lot of people would have said that, you know, when Jordan Dume, who was only there to score, that's a Quebec League kid who was lighting it up, which is always the highest scoring league Goal in the CHL. Guy. Yeah. So you brought it. When that wasn't working, you got to pull the plug on that sooner and maybe go to a Carson Raycroft, right, who is is – He's playing pretty well in his minutes. And later on, they start giving Easton Cowan more minutes. They start giving Nate Danielson more minutes. Wood. Um, Wood, for sure, is a guy that finally got – but there's almost a – like you're cursed by your schedule. And again, I don't, I'm not making excuses for this team, yeah, but yeah. you win those first two games and all of a sudden you're like, do I jumble the lineup now? We're, we've won, yes. but our, it's not quite clicking. Like you're going to have to look past the results and go – yeah, but this and this isn't working. So it wasn't until the Sweden loss where they finally shook up the lines and and started to get you know a little better look at how things could go. But because not only was this not a great year and all the problems that you've discussed, right? But as you said, there there was no Bedard, there was no Fantilli, there was no you know, Shane Wright, Shane or, Wright. Yeah. There was no Korchinski, there yeah. was no Luno. There was just it, yeah, that was a huge loss with the last minute Tristan Luno and well, and Nelson and, and like yeah. they were missing like the guys who were on the ice. Yeah, God love Bonk and, and Donovan, but yeah. those are those are likely your seven and eight guys, right? I can't speak for Bonk. I know Bonk I probably know. was a little higher up, but yeah, by the time, yeah, that second pair where you're supposed to be your eight, nine guys or the third pair, I mean, we're yeah. supposed to be your eight, nine guys yeah. by the time you got there, injuries to start and, and in terms of get, developing any chemistry, you know, you've got the, the Savoy injury, you've got the geeky thrown out of the game. I think it was 11 seconds yep. in. So um, this, this team Canada, we said it, you know, when we teed it up was never the favorite, but they just never got it going sometimes to their own fault. Sometimes things thrown against them. It just wasn't their year. Yeah. And almost one third, seven of the 22 players were 18 or the one 17 year old. Right? Yeah. It was a young. Well, you pointed out on our Christmas Eve show and we teed this up that you thought going in that they were gearing up for home here in Ottawa. Well, I, I think once you look at it and you go, okay, we're not getting the, the players we've already named. Yeah. They're not coming back. And at that point, not even Potras was coming back. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was. And that's another guy who just didn't work. Well, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you parachute him like Shane Wright last year. Yep. It just coming back from playing. Well, so rarely that Curtis Lazar didn't Curtis work. Curtis Lazar was like, the other There's a, I think Ryan Joe, uh, I was going to say Ryan Johansson. It wasn't, it was Brett Connolly from Tampa. Uh, five or six, seven years ago now. It, it's hard for those guys to wrap their heads around. I'm I'm being demoted, right? Like, in, and often they don't produce as often as they do. They don't. Right. Like, it's kind of a coin flip when those guys come back. Yeah. So it it was. And I've lost my train of thought. Uh, I do that. It's okay. Totally oh, you fine. Do that. Yeah, I do that to you all the time. <laughs> but you're a pro, and I and I and I'm not. Oh. All right. Uh, yeah. It it just it just didn't work. 
It wasn't their year. Oh, I had mentioned that you were you had suggested they might be gearing oh, right. up for Ottawa. Yes. So sorry, once that happens, once you don't get those guys and you go, all right, we're left with this, but let's go with, because I think there's seven or eight guys off this squad. Yeah. Eligible to come back. Right. Very similar to the checks, right? They had seven guys, I think, who who had to watch Canada sing the anthem yep. in Halifax last year. Uh, also, let's not discount the terrible goal song. I got a lot of shade. For Great Big C, you're For not gr- feeling it? Not that song. Ordinary Day? It feels like... I didn't feel like it was one of their strong ones, but I didn't hate it. I, I'm kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's cool. It's fine. Uh, I yeah. don't know, man. No, okay. I, and I know they were trying to get that sort of maritime feel. That made sense last year in the Maritimes. In the Maritimes. But you're in... And now Gothenburg, I believe, is also on the water, so maybe. Okay. <laughs> maybe, but yeah, I... I, I just the song, not great. All like right. they should have went with the, you know, uh, crash test dummies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that would have been better, I think. Once yeah. it was this team who <laughs> didn't get. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but that is uh, just to me, it was uninspiring. Yeah, uninspiring. Uh, yeah, I said going in, I wasn't feeling the buzz as much as I usually do. That. Never really subsided for me. When it came on on Boxing Day, I was up, I was watching. Uh, but, you know, I missed one game because we had a kind of a family thing. I missed half of another because we were... And normally that irritates me when I'm missing a World Junior game. This year I was kind of fine with it. I, I don't know what that was. Maybe that's my mindset more than... Because I didn't go in thinking they're going to bow out in the quarters. No, you never do. No. Um, so... Uh, I don't think this is one of those ones where we should be panicking and planning summits and whatever else. Well, Shanahan's this, busy though. This was a great year, or not a great year. This is not a great age group. Uh, they had some things thrown against them, and then they didn't play all that well. And yeah, I and and it seems like in terms of they won in Czechia two years ago, I believe, yeah. but. They don't do so well. The results aren't as consistent on the big ice. Well, it's funny, eh? When you look at that crazy bounce against that eliminates you in the quarters and you forget about, you know, last year in the semis, there's one in overtime, or maybe it was the quarters last year that went to overtime, or one that's just barely off the knob of Thomas Milich's stick and and goes over the, like, they played two, uh, two overtime games in the quarters and the finals, like, you got some bounces there that went your way. Yep. They've been in four straight gold medal games. At some point, you've gotten some breaks along the way. And this year, you didn't get them when probably Puck you needed off them the TSN most. Camera and- yeah, yeah, yeah. So these things can go either way in one game elimination. This is not a. This is not one of those ones where you you need to melt down and Canadian hockey is broken. And because that 2019 one, how about that? Was it Evan Bouchard or Noah Dobson who's going in on the fins and he's. And he goes to take that slapper and his stick breaks. Yeah, fins, yeah, yeah. And the fins go back the other way in a quarter again. Well, what about the one that was in the summer where Mason McTavish knocks the one down off the goal line in his own end that allows Kent Johnston to go? Like, that's a ridiculous play to keep that out of your net. You could have lost that one, right? Like, sometimes it's it's yep. just that close, yep. right? And You and throw so, the beans on the table and sometimes they go your way. Right. 